This Herculean beast of a graphics card is the most powerful low-profile graphics card that you can buy. It's the GTX 1650 with GDDR6, which sounds pretty fancy. <laughs> This is gonna be a pretty controversial video. <laughs> Actually, let me, let me deal with the elephant in the room right in the beginning of the video so that we all know where each other stands before we get further into the video. Low-powered graphics cards are, are pretty weird because if you're negative about them on the internet, people get super angry. And if you're positive about them on the internet, people also get super angry. But today, I'm gonna kind of play the devil's advocate here. Now, there are many very negative reviews of this GTX 1650 on the internet, and you know who you are if you made one of those videos. Your name usually starts with a Steve. <laughs> when comparing the GTX 1650 to something like an RX 570, <laughs> it's not looking good for the GTX 1650, because in most cases the 570 is cheaper, but it performs better. So case closed, right? Because yes, if you're building a system from the ground up to be a gaming system with a decent power supply and decent airflow in it, the RX 570 is the obvious choice. And after the RX 570, there are many other obvious choices before you get to the 1650. And this is where it gets pretty controversial, because I feel like comparing this to an RX 570 kind of misses the point. About two weeks ago, I did a video where I upgraded an old small form factor Lenovo system into a gaming system by dropping a GT 1030 in there. Okay, I get it. I say GT 1030 weird, but you're gonna have to make peace with it because I say it a lot by dropping a GT 1030 in there, which is another one of these terrible low profile graphics cards. Now the gaming performance was fine, but you could still feel the compromise. It still felt like you were gaming on a cheap office PC with a cheap graphics card in it. So what happens if you have one of these older small form factor office PCs with like an i5 or an i7 in it, you've got a little bit more money to spend on a graphics card and you don't want loser compromise street gaming performance. You can't exactly throw an RX 570 in there because A, the power supply isn't powerful enough and B, there are no low profile versions of the RX 570. And that is exactly where this GTX 1650 comes in because it's a low profile, low power graphics card that can work on a system with a 250 watt power supply in it and it gives you pretty good 1080p gaming performance. Don't get me wrong, I completely agree that it costs too much for the performance that it offers, and it would have been an easier recommendation if it cost like $120, but even though it is too expensive for its performance, I do still think it's got a use case. When it comes to low profile, low power graphics cards, unfortunately, the GTX 1650 is the most powerful option that you have. And the older versions like a low profile 1050 Ti or a low profile RX 560 aren't that easy to get your hands on. And when you do get your hands on one, they usually don't cost that much less than the GTX 1650. Now with all of that out the way, let's have a look at the low profile GTX 1650 GDDR6 version that I'm using in today's video. Physically, this gigabyte version that I have has a pretty beefy cooler on it for a low profile card. Uh, the temperatures aren't amazing, but we'll get into that a bit later. It also has a very fat rear IO for a low profile graphics card. You have two HDMI ports, a DVI port and a display port for some serious gaming action. This graphics card is fairly chunky for a low profile card, but you'd be hard pressed to find a system that this doesn't fit in. Now the exact PC that I'm gonna test it with today is the broke ass gaming system that I did a video on a couple of weeks ago, turning a little Lenovo small form factor system into a gaming system by adding a GT 1030. Well, now we're gonna add a GTX 1650. 
Just a quick recap of the specs in that system. It's got an i5-4570 in it and 8 gigs of DDR3 running at 1600 megahertz with an SSD and then some other Lenovo-y things. Before we get into a comparison, let's have a look at what kind of performance you're getting As you can see, if you have a 1080p 60Hz monitor, all of these games were very playable at high settings on this GTX 1650. When it comes to CSGO, it runs very well. It is at low settings, but that's what people use to play, I've been told. And unless you have like a 240Hz monitor or game at a higher resolution, you don't need more power than this. GTA 5 also runs very well at high settings at 1080p, and the game looks very good at those settings. Um, yeah, pretty good showing here. When it comes to PUBG at 1080p low settings, it's very playable. Even in a more kind of serious competitive situation, you're, you're not going to be held back too much by the system, which I think is pretty cool because PUBG, if it doesn't have enough power, becomes really stuttery. Um, so yeah, you don't have those issues with the 1650. I played some Overwatch on it as well. I can't really comment about Overwatch too much because I barely ever play it. The game makes no sense to me, but it runs very well and it looks really good. So yeah, pretty decent gaming experience. And then finally, I just want to briefly mention Escape from Tarkov. I never put it in the normal benchmark results because it is the optimization equivalent of a medium-sized earthquake, so it's very difficult to get repeatable results, but I think it's interesting to see how it runs on lower-end systems. The answer is not very well. When running the game at 1080p at the lowest settings, it does really struggle because Tarkov wants a lot of video memory and a lot of system RAM as well. So the eight gigs of RAM in the system is really holding it back. One thing that you do have to do with Escape from Tarkov is disable the use only physical cores option because that gives you a much higher frame rate. And then finally, before we get into the comparison, I do want to mention that this graphics card does run very hot. I don't think it's a great cooler and there's not enough shroud gaps on it or whatever. Um, but you're hitting about 83C while gaming. That is with a 25 degree ambient temperature. In fact, the only review of this graphics card on Amazon is one star because some guy's really angry that this 1650 runs hotter than his passively cooled 1030. And yeah, I think he overreacted a bit, but do bear in mind, it does run pretty hot. I'm just gonna quickly compare the GTX 1650 to the GT 1030 because I think it's interesting to see how much more performance you get for about double the money and if you're using one of these low profile uh, office PC systems to game on, is it worth getting a 1650 over a 1030? Getting straight into a couple of esports titles, when it comes to CSGO, the difference isn't that massive, but I think that's down to CPU bottlenecks being an issue, because as you can see with Rainbow Six Siege, the difference is, is pretty huge at low settings. And when you run the game at high settings on the 1650, you're still getting double the frame rate than low settings on the 1030, so yeah, the performance there is way better. With GTA 5, again, the difference between the two isn't massive at normal settings, uh, but remember the GTA 5 really likes having more threads available to it, and a quad-core CPU with no hyper-threading is not, is not ideal for GTA 5. Moving over to PUBG, at 1080p low settings, the game is pretty much unplayable on the 1030, because remember, it is a fairly competitive shooter, so if you have big frame drops under 40 frames per second, that's not great. Whereas with the 1650, it runs PUBG pretty well, and it's a decent gaming experience. The final game that I'm gonna compare these two head to head on illustrates the difference in performance between the two of them the most effectively, in my opinion, because when it comes to visual safari style games, the GT 1030 really struggles. When it comes to Far Cry 5, which is about four years old at this point, the GT 1030 really 
to the bed, quite frankly. It's completely unplayable at low settings at 1080p, and if you want a playable result, you have to drop it to 720p, which for a visual safari game is, is not the greatest compromise. Whereas with the GTX 1650, you're getting significantly better results. And if you jump it up to high settings at 1080p, you're still getting a playable result. It's not amazing performance, but it is playable. So in conclusion, I just want to remind you all, I'm talking about a very specific use case here. The only way to make the GTX 1650 seem like a reasonable option is by using it in a use case that removes all of its competition. So yeah, that seems like some clearly paid for by NVIDIA content right there. But in all seriousness, for this old small form factor office PC gaming PC use case, I think the 1650 makes quite a lot of sense because currently you're paying about twice as much as a GT 1030 for it. And in a lot of cases, you're actually getting about twice as much performance, which that's some pretty good price to performance scaling right there. And yeah, if you want to play anything other than just CSGO on low settings at 1080p, then I would strongly consider going with the 1650 as opposed to a 1030. Or if you can get a great deal on a secondhand RX 560 or a GTX 1050 Ti small form factor. That's a very big if though. And with that, thank you very much for watching. Uh, let me know in the comment section below what you thought of this video. Uh, like and subscribe if you liked it. And check out my stream later today if you're interested in that kind of thing. And until the next video, bye-bye.